Hello friends, good morning. In this unit that is on high voltage and high current measurement, so far I have discussed different techniques for measurement of high AC voltage, high DC voltage and impulse voltage. The last article in this unit is measurement of high current. So let us start with measurement of high currents. Now I am directly jumping to measurement of high DC current because for high AC current the method is simple and you are familiar. For high AC current measurement we use CT that, that is current transformer. But the sources of error are there because all the CTs are having ratio and phase angle error. So due to ratio and phase angle error some error is coming in the measurement. The method which I am discussing now that is by resistive shunt that is useful for AC currents as well as DC currents. But we normally use it restricted to DC current only because for AC current we prefer the CT that is current transformer method. Let us see what is this method. High magnitude direct currents are measured using a resistive shunt of low ohmic value. Now resistive shunt means a resistance of low ohmic value. High current resistors that is resistive shunts are usually oil immersed and are made as 3 or 4 terminal resistances. They are oil immersed because they are measuring very high current. So heat generated is I square into R. Though R is very small but heat generated is very high due to square of the current magnitude. And they may be of 3 terminal or they may be of 4 terminals. In this diagram I have shown 4 terminal current register, high current register that is a resistive shunt. These are current terminals CC and PPR voltage terminals and this is resistive shunt. Here it current is incoming and current is outgoing. The value of the resistive resistance varies usually between 10 micro ohms to a few milli ohms. You can see here how much, how small is the magnitude of this resistance because current is very high. So we want to limit the heat generated that is power dissipated. This depends on the heating effect and the loading permitted in the circuit. The voltage drop across the shunt is limited to a few millivolts that is less than 1 volts and it is measured with a millivolt meter. So this is resistive shunt. One terminal is connected to incoming side and second terminal is connected to the outgoing side that they are current terminals and between P and P these are voltage terminals and a millivolt meter is connected between P and P. Now let us take one numerical, design a suitable shunt with millivolt meter to measure current up to 50 kilo ampere. The wattage, the wattage rating of the shunt should not exceed 50 kilowatt. So here we have to measure 50 kilo ampere current and the shunt available has maximum heat bearing capacity of 50 kilowatt. Or W that is heat generated or power gen power dissipated in this shunt is I square into R. I is 50 kilo ampere and W that is current uh, that is heat, heat heat rating or power dissipation is limited to 50 kilowatts. So using this formula W is equal to I square into R. We are getting R is equal to 20 micro ampere. So we have to use a shunt resistive shunt of 20 micro ohms resistance and it should have heat dissipation capacity that is power rating of 50 kilowatt. Now voltage drop across this will be I into R. I is 50 kilo ampere and R is 20 micro amperes, 20 micro ohms. So V is coming 1 volt that is 1000 millivolt. So we have to use a voltmeter of 1 volt range that is 1000 millivolt range. This is how the resistive shunt magnitude and its power rating are decided or computed. Second method for measurement of high DC current is by high effect transistor, transducer. This method is also used for measurement of high AC voltage. Let us see the principle. The principle of the high effect is made use of in measuring very high direct currents. If an electric current flows through a metal plate located in a magnetic field perpendicular to it, an EMF in the normal direction called high voltage will be generated. So, this is a metal plate 
this is the current going through this metal plate it is kept in the magnetic field of B so according to the Hall, Hall effect a current a voltage called as Hall voltage is generated in the direction normal to this so this is one direction second direction so this is the direction normal to this plate so across this a voltage called as Hall voltage is generated let us say D is the thickness of this plate the Hall voltage is proportional to the current I the magnetic flux density B and the reciprocal of the plate thickness D so this is the formula for Hall voltage generated it is proportional to magnetic flux density B current I and thickness and it is inversely proportional to the thickness of the plate that is D and R is proportionality constant R is called the Hall, co Hall coefficient for metals the Hall coefficient is very small and hence semiconductor materials are used for which the Hall coefficient is high now for accurate measurement the proportionality constant should be as high as possible therefore in place of using metal plate we are using a semiconductor material because it has high value of Hall coefficient now this is the Hall effect transducer so this is the principle it is the metal plate or semiconductor plate the current is flowing that is I in one direction magnetic field is perpendicular to this and as I had explained Hall voltage is generated in the direction normal to this so here it is the current that is capital I is the current which is to be measured now this is the magnetic material so when this high current flows it generates flux and this is B is magnetic flux density it is the Hall transducer that is semiconductor material through this semiconductor material a known current that is ID is passed that is DC current here voltage source is there RD is the resistance to limit this current and this current ID is constant so ID is known VH can be measured so from this equation VH is equal to R BI upon D where R is Hall coefficient R is Hall coefficient that is known B is proportional to this I so in place of B we can write I small i that is this current that is represented by id in this diagram that is also known d is the thickness of the plate that is also known so we can compute the value of b which is proportional to the unknown current capital i so it, this is how the hall effect transducer is used to measure high dc current next is measurement of high frequency and impulse current for impulse currents like impulse voltage measurement as well as recording of the waveform is necessary the current amplitudes may range from a few amperes to 100 kilo amperes standard lightning impulse have duration of 4, 4 by 10 or 8 by 20 microsecond this i have explained in last unit that is generation of high current high, high voltages and high currents that impulse currents are of two types that is impulsive current are of two types one is having duration of 4 by 10 microsecond and other is having duration of 8 by 20 microsecond the rate of rise for such currents can be as high as 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 12 amperes per second and rise times can vary from few microseconds to few nanoseconds therefore the sensing device should be capable of measuring the signal over a wide frequency band because if this is the time duration that is in microsecond if we compute the frequency that will go in megahertz so the measuring device should have wide frequency band for measurement the most common method employed for high impulse current measurement is a low ohmic pure resistive shunt with digital storage oscilloscope digital storage oscilloscope is required for recording the current waveform application of this high currents are for for testing of lightning arrestor because during lightning discharge the high current that is impulsive in nature flows through the lightning arrestor the high, high impulse current is required in electric arcs and post arc phenomena studies with circuit breakers and with electric discharge studies in plasma physics now this is the arrangement IT is current to be measured this is the IT current to be measured this R is a resistive shunt VT is the voltage developed across this resistive shunt that is R into IT 
Z0 is surge impedance of coaxial cable. This is coaxial cable. RT is impedance matching resistance. So this RT should be equal to Z0. And this is digital storage oscilloscope. First I will explain this. Now test object and impulse current and measuring device. They are inside the Faraday cage. And the control panel is outside the Faraday cage. That is digital storage oscilloscope is also outside the Faraday cage. Therefore, we have to take the voltage sample which is proportional to the current from this point up to this point that is for a, uh, for a distance of few meters. So we require a, a coaxial cable to provide electrostatic shielding to this signal. This signal should not be affected by due to electromagnetic interference. So here we are having a resistive shunt. Current is IT that is to be measured. So here we can get the voltage VT and that is that voltage sample which is proportional to current is taken through this coaxial cable to this digital storage oscilloscope. Now when this signal is coming to digital storage oscilloscope, there is change in impedance. And as per the traveling waves theory, whenever transient signal is there and there is change in impedance, part of it is transmitted and part of it is it, it is reflected. So in order to pass the complete signal into the object, that is in order to avoid the reflection, impedance matching is necessary. So when impedance matching is there, whatever signal is coming, whatever, whatever is the incident voltage or the incident current wave that passes into the object without any reflection. So transmitted wave is equal to incident wave. Therefore, we require the impedance matching register RT and this impedance should be equal to Z0. Now, why this circuit is given? Now, as this resistance is having, is, is <coughs> As very high impulse current is passing through this, that is high frequency current is passing through. So whenever resistance is there, it is not pure resistance. It consists of inductance as well as capacitance. So if frequency is small, this inductance and capacitance effect can be neglected. But here the frequency is in the range of mega ohms. So L will generate the reactance XL that is 2 pi, 2 pi F into L. F is in megahertz. C will generate capacitive reactance that is Xc is equal to 1 upon 2 pi Fc. So, we have to neglect or minimize the effect of this inductance as, and this capacitance. So, now let us see how we are making this resistance so that effect of this inductance and this capacitance is minimized. So, for this purpose we are using bifilar resistance strip. Bifilar flat strip resistance is shown here in this diagram. This is metal, ba metal, brace, metal base. Here current is coming. This is current, ter current terminal. In this diagram, C1 and C2, they are current terminals. Here they are in this diagram, 2 and 2. Means this point and this point, they are current terminals. And this complete is metal base. And this is bifilar metal strip. Now this bifilar metal strip consists of register element wound in opposite direction. Now see, this is one direction, current is flowing and then current is coming like this. So it will cancel out the effect generated by inductance, stay inductance and contact capacitance. So the bifilar strip consists of register elements wound in opposite directions and folded back with both ends insulated by Teflon or other high quality insulation. So this these two ends are insulated by Teflon. So this is the number four is insulating spacer that consists of Teflon or Bakelite. And this is the arrangement for coaxial VHF connector that is cable. In previous diagram I have shown the cable. Now the voltage signal is picked through uh, ultra high voltage UHF that is UHF coaxial connector. So this is the equivalent circuit. So current is coming, it is current terminal, current is going, it is current terminal and this is the bifilar resistance strip and these are the connections for voltage signal P and this is P2 and this coaxial cable is going to the digital storage oscilloscope. So in this way the 
इम्पल्स करंट इज मेजर्ड एंड रिकॉर्डेड फ्रेंड्स दैट्स ऑल अबाउट दिस यूनिट दैट इज मेजरमेंट ऑफ हाई वोल्टेज एंड हाई करंट इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई यू एक्सप्लेन हाउ हाई ए सी करंट हाई डी सी करंट एंड हाई इम्पल्स करंट आर मेजर इफ यू फील दिस वीडियो लेक्चर यूजफुल देन प्लीज लाइक इट subscribe to my channel ask your friends colleagues and juniors to subscribe to my channel for upcoming video lectures on high voltage engineering and power system production you can see the video experiments on high voltage measurement these are the links first experiment is calibration of high voltage panel voltmeter using sphere gap method this experiment is related to this unit this is the link for this experiment next next experiment experiment is high ac voltage measurement techniques this is the link in this experiment different high voltage measurement techniques are explained they are demonstrated and comparative study is made next experiment is high dc voltage measurement techniques in this method uh, in this experiment different high dc voltage measurement techniques are explained demonstrated and they are compared this is the link for the experiment friends if you want to make effective and efficient use of time then read my book on time management this is the link for the book this is very useful book for effective time management i have launched a useful course for students on udemy title of the course is accelerate your learning by power of visualization this is a course to increase your brain power and program the mind for success this course is very useful for the students who are preparing for competitive and entrance exams this is the link for the course thank you